on the list. Boost your mood with a hit song. How virtual reality is changing fitness and the latest tech that will revolutionize the way we charge. This can charge your laptop, your phone, your tablet, everything all in one. Plus, Oh, that is great. It's very light. Pour a taste of summer with winter sangria recipes. Can't whine about the wine. <laughs> but up first, it's the year of the rabbit, which means love, relationships, and so much more. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey, everyone, I'm Jimmy Rhodes. And I'm Christina Guerrero. Guys, it is time for another celebration. Festivities kick off Sunday for Chinese New Year. And the Chinese put a huge amount of importance on this holiday. It's a time to look ahead at what the next 12 months might bring. So exciting. So we have what you need to know about the coming year and how we got here. And that's our featured story at the top of the list. Chances are you celebrated the New Year when the ball dropped on January 1st. But there's another new year days away with the celebration just as exciting. And there's so much joy and so much energy. Everybody gets involved. There's colors, there's lights, there's dancing, there's music. And it goes on for days because this is the beginning of a new era. The Chinese New Year kicks off on January 22nd. So feng shui master and Chinese metaphysics expert Jen Stone tells us what we can expect from the year of the rabbit. But first, what's the significance of the Chinese New Year? You see the ball drop and you toast to the New Year's, but you really kind of just get into 2023 like any other day. But when you kind of have the background and the history like you have in the Chinese calendar, it's so much more powerful. Yes. Well, one thing to remember about the Chinese system, the system itself is very predictable. You can go back to history to understand what happened in the past. You can learn from that. So before we look ahead to the future, we have to look at the past. We look a little bit further back with 2020, which is we know is the year of the pandemic. And the year of the pandemic was really a conduit or the beginning that sort of spiral pushing us to close out a chapter in our life. Then you move into 2021, which I call the year of death. And the year of death just simply means what are areas in my life that represent the dying part? And so sometimes it's I've let go of my addiction or I've let go of that thought or I've let go of that old dream. When we move into 2022, it's the beginning of new things. It's a time for planting seeds. It's a time for recalibration, rethinking things because parts of ourselves have died and we can no longer live or operate in that same space anymore. Which brings us to 2023. Are you optimistic for 2023? Of course I am. I'm always optimistic. Moving into the year of the rabbit, 2023, and the rabbit represents the full expression of springtime. What does that look like? The animals are having babies and the trees are lush and the flowers are blooming. So you have to ask yourself, of all the work that I've done since 2020 and all those different layers, how am I moving into 2023 as the fullness expression of myself today? Jen also says this will be a big year for relationships. The year of the rabbit has a strong connotation related to relationships, okay? It's the year of healing. It's the year of forgiveness. It's the year of reconnection and re-engagement. Ringing in the Chinese New Year. I am excited and ready for 2023. Yes, ma'am. Bring on the rabbit. I know, me too. Yay. <laughs> is at the top of the list. It's kind of odd. No matter how new our tech gadgets are, we usually charge them with devices that are inefficient at best. But a revolution is brewing. Teresa Strasser looks at how GAN chargers are offering speed, safety, and energy savings. Charging our gadgets with traditional silicon-based chargers has always been slow, but a newer technology using gallium nitride promises to make the process faster and safer. So what that means for your common user is A, you get a smaller device that doesn't uh, generate as much heat because you're not losing as much heat and you're getting faster charging. Tech expert and YouTuber Travis McPherson explains why you may want one of these GAN chargers. 
starting with speed. A lot of the technology that's built into phones and things you're gonna charge are now taking advantage of fast charging. You can get up to three times faster speed with a GAN charger. Samsung Galaxy and iPhone both support the new fast charging standard, which is only possible with a GAN charger. Charging a phone from like zero to like 70% in like 15 minutes is something that didn't exist up until now. The next benefit of a GAN charger is it is physically smaller and stays much cooler. When you have a, a new like laptop or something, you might see these huge power bricks that come with them and they might be like a 30 or 40 watt charger. Travis says these old style chargers are inefficient and that translates to heat. GAN chargers do this in a much more efficient way and they're much smaller. This right here is a 100 watt charger. Travis says one GAN charger can potentially replace all of our older ones as it has multiple ports from the newer USB-C to the older USB standard. So this thing has multiple outputs, three USB, uh, four USB here at 100 watts, which means this can charge your laptop, your phone, your tablet, everything all in one. Travis's third benefit of GAN charging is the power savings. A common silicon charger actually loses efficiency. It's about 87% efficient. The new GAN technology is over 90% efficient. That doesn't sound like a lot, but it definitely adds up over time. If you're interested in purchasing a GAN charger, Travis recommends going with established name brands. This is both for safety and reliability. When you go and buy one, you have to make sure you're buying from companies that are reputable. I can tell you two that I've actually worked with and used Anchor being one of the powerhouses in the industry, pardon the pun, and Ugreen, another company that I really think is amazing. Their price to performance is pretty much unmatched. You can find these online and in stores like Best Buy and Walmart at various price points. Keeping our gadgets topped off and cooled off with GAN chargers. Well, there is nothing quite as thirst quenching as a glass of sangria in the summertime, but guys, this Spanish quencher is surprisingly versatile all year round. Patty Dijamal has some crowd-pleasing sangrias that'll pour some sunshine into your winter cocktail hour. This winter, kick back and sip on the sweet taste of sangria. I've earned this. You have. We met up with Shamara Reed, bartender at Humble Bistro in Phoenix, Arizona, to bring you three variations of this popular Spanish wine cocktail. Can they be served cold or warm? Generally cold, but you can add ingredients that make them feel more like warm and cozy or comforting. You'll see some like pomegranate and cinnamon and rosemary and things that just make you feel really comforted, warm on the inside. Let's begin with the simple winter white sangria. Very easy, we've got about four or five ingredients. Start with some ice in a cocktail shaker, followed by the main star, white wine. Gotta get the wine in there. Add some triple sec, rosemary syrup, and both lemon and orange juice. Are you getting the flex in this? <laughs> Anytime you add lemon in a cocktail, it just brightens it up, makes it not so heavy or sweet, especially with something like a sangria, which can be sugar heavy. Give it a stir, pour, and garnish with a rosemary sprig tossed in sugar and some dehydrated orange slices. It's citrusy and the lemon gives it just a little bit of a kick to bring it all together. Right, just keeps it going. Makes it easy to drink. Up next, we have La Vie en Rosé. This is kind of the root less taken for this one. Um, we're actually gonna do a rosé sangria. Add some rosé to your shaker with ice. Can't whine about the wine. <laughs> Followed by brandy. Also going in, ginger simple syrup, pomegranate juice, and lime juice. Oh, look at that. Uh, it's just such a fun color. For garnish, some pomegranate seeds and candied ginger. They got that fun sugar effect and they're delicious. It definitely has a little bit of a spice. Yep, and then you get to the bottom and you have that fun like sangria soaked piece of that candy ginger, it's so fun. And for our final cocktail, say hello to the red before bed. It's gonna be very nighttime, very winter cozy. This time, red wine goes into our shaker with ice, followed by brandy, cinnamon simple syrup, cherry syrup, orange juice, lemonade, and stir it up. Ooh, this one is definitely a lot darker. Mm -hmm. It's a very seductive red, okay. For garnish, some mixed berries, frozen or fresh. That's nice and simple. And then a dehydrated lime here. I love it, it looks like I, I made something really special. You did. 
I really did. This tastes amazing. I told you. And if you're looking for alcohol-free versions. With sangria, it's especially easy because it's already a fruit and kind of juice-based cocktail. She recommends soda water instead of white wine, apple juice instead of rosé, and grape juice instead of a red wine. You've got a good time, and you don't need alcohol to do it. For full recipes, head to our Facebook page at The List Show TV. We're helping you unwind with the perfect sangria. Still to come on the list, exercise at home with a virtual reality workout. I can just put on this VR and be lost in a song and then breaking a sweat at the same time. And why a hit song can boost your mood. Plus, how a school is punching out negative feelings. Seeing the change in how people went in and then came out, it was awesome. All that and more ahead on The List. YouTube, sure, you're right in the middle of a show, but don't we need to just pause, take it all in, and have our moment of zen? <sighs> how about hitting subscribe and turning on notifications, too? Because nothing's more zen than clicking those buttons, and that way you'll never miss a minute of The List. Okay, Zen time's over, back to the show. Welcome back, and KG, as you might imagine, January is the month when the most people sign up for gym memberships. Yes, my gym class the other day was packed. But guys, if the reality of sharing sweaty workout equipment with strangers makes you cringe, we've got an alternative. Jackie Denker is swapping barbells for a headset to do a virtual workout. Pop on a VR headset. Load a game and suddenly you're sparring in a boxing ring or skiing in the Swiss Alps. But does this type of workout really work? I think VR exercise is potentially revolutionary in the sense that people will comply with it because they like to do it. We spoke with Aaron Stanton, founder of the VR Institute of Health and Exercise at San Francisco State University, to learn if virtual exercise is something you might want to try. First, we asked him which equipment we need to get started. Hands down at the moment, the easiest, um, most self-contained and least expensive one, the Quest systems, Meta's Quest 2. He says you can buy a VR headset at most major stores and online. They run about $400. They really contain everything that you need from an equipment standpoint to use. Then you need a smartphone. Android and Apple both work. Download the Oculus smartphone app from either the Google Play or Apple App Store. Stanton says the app walks you through the setup. Next, here's how you select the right workout game for you. VR headset is replacing the gym, right? You'd go to a gym and you'd choose to do weightlifting, you'd choose to do elliptical or whatever, and you choose which game you want to play for the type of exercise, the type of experience you want. You'll see a guide with all types of workouts. Some are free and others have a monthly fee. Finally, how does a VR workout stack up to a real one? Measuring the ratio on the inhale, ratio on the exhale, we can estimate how many calories you burn during that breath. Then they create stats you'll find on workout game labels. And then we can basically create a comparison. Say, okay, well, 30 minutes in this game is the calorie or energy equivalent of 30 minutes on the elliptical or 30 minutes on a treadmill. Stanton says 30% of VR games provide a moderate to intense workout, similar to what you would do in a gym. Boxing games tend to be the best. A lot of side to side motion and vertical motion in a short amount of time uh, is going to be a, a cardiovascular workout. Anthony Crocelli, a fitness instructor in the game Light Boxer VR, agrees. You can punch your favorite songs and you see the lights light up and the music gets louder as you're building your streak. Light Boxer VR claims it can burn 300 calories in 30 minutes. I can just put on this VR and be lost in a song and then breaking a sweat at the same time. VR, helping you get your workout on in a new and fun way. There is no denying it only takes one person to create change. These stories show that and they're also your weekly reminder that kindness wins. All right, first up is a 15 year old singer and songwriter who uses her talents to help put a stop to child abuse. But I'm flying a little higher. I learned the statistics that five kids die every day because of child abuse and neglect. And like ev with everyone, you kind of just like, wow, that's, that's a lot. And I really wanted to use my voice for good. Last year, Roosevelt Rawls hosted 45 assembly concerts at Arizona schools where thousands of students not only enjoyed her vocals, 
but also left with a powerful message. It's really important that everyone knows that it's not okay for anyone to hurt you. Now she's geared up to take that message to 60 stops across the U.S. next to the country music trio Chapel Hearts. Every city that we're at will be hitting at least one school tour and our goal is to do about 100 school assemblies. There is help, all they need to do is speak up and it will keep them safe. What a great message. You can learn more at RooseveltSings.com. All right, up next is a Massachusetts-based nonprofit on a mission to fight hygiene insecurity. 60% of low-income families need to make the choice between food or hygiene, and that's just not acceptable. Since 2010, Hope and Comfort has partnered with over 200 community-based organizations to change that in the state. We distributed 5 million essential products to combat hygiene insecurity. As amazing as we're doing, the real need, unfortunately, is tens and tens of millions of products. To support their cause, visit hopeandcomfort.org. So cool. And finally, we head to Kenton South High School in Ohio, where students have been provided with a unique mental health tool. Coming out of COVID, our students were struggling. So teacher Nancy Miller secured a grant to give the school a punching room where students strap on some gloves to get some mental and emotional relief. When you are active, you produce good hormones in your brain and it helps regulate the, the big feels, whatever's going on, stress, anger, frustration. It was awesome being able to like get my own personal time with it and be able to take my anger out in a way that's like not bad. It was nice. What a great idea. And I'm just saying maybe offices or TV studios could use that too. And those are three stories that show kindness wins. When we come back, we are keeping those feel good vibes going with some pick me up songs. You're going to want to play on repeat. Stay with us. Tips to make your life easier. Way harder with this thing on. It's your life. It's your list. And it's on YouTube at the list show TV. Welcome back, and on today's playlist, when you need some good vibes to give yourself a boost, the right music can bring the magic. We're running down some confidence anthems to help you conquer whatever lies ahead. Turn up the volume, because these are confidence-boosting songs you'll want to play on repeat. Sometimes you want to put a song on that just makes you feel like a bad B. You know what I mean? It gives you that confidence boost and makes you feel like you could do anything. Apple Music host Brooke Reese highlights four songs that'll do the trick. Starting with a song by Queen, Don't Stop Me Now. Obviously, Queen is just iconic for just like belting out the lyrics and these songs being so special and full of emotion. And this one specifically. The hit was written by Freddie Mercury and released as a single in 1979 during a time when rumors were swirling around the singer's sexuality. Which, by the way, was nobody's business. But the fact that he was getting out there and just, you know, like, don't stop me now. Oh, it's just so simple. Like, I literally love this one so much. Moving on to a dance track by the queen of pop, Madonna, Express Yourself. The 1989 song, though originally written as a feminist anthem, has also been embraced by the LGBTQ plus community as a pride anthem. People are still screaming it and singing it at the top of their lungs. I mean, it's as simple as literally putting this song on and express yourself. Just like be who you are and it's all good. Let's fast forward to the early 2010s for a song by Kelly Clarkson, Stronger. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Stand a little the title track from the singer's fifth album is all about empowerment and recovery after a heartbreak. I mean, honestly, though, like what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. People have been saying it for years, but putting it into songs and feel something, it lifts that negative energy and you can just put yourself out there. Finally, we've got a 2019 hit by Lizzo, Juice. Mirror, mirror on the wall, don't say it cause I know I'm cute. Oh, baby. Basically all of Lizzo's songs are about self-empowerment and self-love. I feel like she's been writing music like that, not only for her fans, but for herself as well. If you are definitely feeling like you need a little bit of that self-confidence boost, that is an artist I think that you should immediately go to and press play on because your mood will instantly be lifted. Yeah, yeah. 
for treating ourselves to some confidence anthems on the playlist. For sure, Jimmy's confidence song is Lizzo's Juice. What can I say? Her music speaks to me. I think she had me in mind when she wrote it. Uh, oh, for sure. I don't think so. All right, coming up next, ready for a trendy new workplace catchphrase? Another one? Yes, there is. On today's Last on Our List, we are breaking down quiet hiring. That's next. guys, welcome back. It is time for what's last on our list. Okay, the biggest trend at the end of last year was this idea of quiet quitting. Wait a minute, did we ban quiet quitting from our vocabulary for 2023? Indeed we did. Likely to make way for a new catchphrase, quiet hiring. From CNBC, quiet hiring will dominate the U.S. in 2023, says HR expert, and you need to prepare for it. Okay, let's break this down for you. The uncertainty of a recession has companies putting the brakes on hiring. So to be clear, quiet hiring isn't really hiring at all. It's just asking employees to fill in or take on new responsibilities. For instance, they cite Australia's Qantas airline. They ask their executives to rotate in as baggage handlers because of a labor shortage, which I think is great because even if you're at the top of the corporate ladder, no job should ever be beneath you. Completely agree. Now for employers, experts say, make sure your team knows why the roles are changing, these rotations are happening, and what it means for the company. And for the employees being shifted around, the HR expert says it could be a great opportunity for you to redefine your place in the company and maybe even wrangle a promotion. Ooh, you know, this makes me realize I may have been quietly hired to clean the dressing room without even knowing it. Probably. You know, we wear a lot of hats around here. I was quietly hired to keep you under control, but I digress. What? And that's what's last on our list. Thanks. YouTube, you watched us all the way to the very end. And for that, I am so grateful. Hey, don't forget to like this video, leave us a comment down below and hit the subscribe button so you don't ever miss a list. And if you want more list episodes, well, we've conveniently placed them right here just for you. No, just for you.